So looking at the different types of rules and where they all sit. So we've noticed that it's on Panorama we have the pre-rules, post-rules and default rules. And that's an easy way of looking at it and it's exactly the same on the firewall itself. We have the pre-rules, post-rules and the default rules. All firewalls have the default rules by default, ironically enough. And they look, when they when they first there, they look basically like this. They are an intra-zone and an inter-zone. Intra-zone default by default allows all traffic. However, it is intra-zone, so it's only say inside to inside, outside to outside, land to land, DMZ to DMZ. So it only allows that traffic. The second one of the default rules is the inter-zone default rule, which is allowing say uh, LAN to internet, DMZ to internet, internet to DMZ, outside to DMZ and so on. By default they are not logged so by default they, they don't log and you can't just alter it from there because it's read only so you would go into the shared and then you would override that rule. When you override that rule you've got the option of log at session start, log at session end and log forward him. You can put security profiles on it and you can have an action for it as well. So you can override those default actions. You would, in the most cases where you want um, complete security, you would probably put a, a explicit deny at the bottom of the rule base, which would go above here. In this case, in the post rules, or it would go in there. So I say, by default, the default rules are not logged, they can be overridden as you can see directly on this device here they're overridden and in Panorama we can see that the default rules uh, they've come from the shared and in shared they are exactly as they would normally be and then for VM London we've overridden it within VM London to say that we want it logged and log forwarded and then if we look on the firewall itself at the bottom we can see that is reflected there as well. Okay, so another way of demonstrating that is to look on our Chicago firewall which isn't managed by Panorama. So again we've got interest zone default, that is any zone to itself, so anything that's in the same zone. Bear in mind as well this can also go across segments, so if you have two interfaces in the same zone but they're different networks they will then be able to communicate with each other based on the intra-zone rule and then inter-zone default now by far the most popular and usual type you'll use is universal and when you create a rule it is universal it is selected by default so if we want to give this our so this is going to be our demo rule Okay, we, and we have the selection here for intrazone or interzone, but we're going to go universal default. And these are our uh, these are our options here as well. So we can put a description. So we can give it our description. And again, if we looked in the policy settings previously, we could also see that this can be enforced, as we'll see in a minute. And then we have tags. I don't believe there are any tags on this file. Well, no, they're not. Uh, group rules by tag. So that's how we can view then our rule base by uh, tags and then audit comment and we can see the audit comment archive so we have our source which is we're going to go from our user LAN to our internet we can select a destination address we can add a destination address in which case um, so for instance we're just going to allow all traffic to Brazil for whatever reason destination device Again, we've got source address, source user, and source device. That can all be selected. The service that we're going to go on, so the service and URL category. So application default simply means that any application, so for instance, uh, SSL communication over 443 would be allowed application default. SSL communication over 8443, which is traditionally a proxy address, uh, would not be allowed. Any, or we can select and if we have multiple applications in this side and then we select those whichever ports on there that would be a logical or so it's this application on port 1, port 2, port 3 okay so we're going to go application defaults in this particular instance URL category here so we can also say that we only want to go to a specific um, 
URL category or we want to allow traffic to that or not allow traffic to that. So if I wanted to allow, for instance, this, I wanted to allow access only to motor vehicles, then I would only see traffic going to motor vehicles. Again, we can deny it. So we deny it and that sends a reset both ways. We can allow it, we can drop it, which silently drops it, but we can send an ICMP unreachable. So rather than a reset packet, we'll get an ICMP unreachable. So if we go with that, simply drop, send ICMP unreachable. Okay, and then we can reset the client, which sends a reset packet to the client. So in my case, it would be my desktop, the server, it sends one out the other way, and then reset both client and server. Okay, our profile settings. So we've got profiles, we can select them individually. So we can put default or whatever custom ones you have. Again, remember that all, all profiles can be created from here as well. So if I click on that and create a new vulnerability profile, that will be automatically added to this. And we've got groups. So if we want to create a group, we can do it. And again, we can create a new group from here. And then if you want to log at session start, Logging at the session start means that all the starts of all sessions are logged, which um, if we log it at the start of the session, you can create a lot of noise, but it's useful for uh, it's useful for troubleshooting because you can see if the you know the initial connectivity set up. Whereas log at session end, it needs a TCP session to be either aged out or to be um, torn down gracefully um, before that log is then written and it's viewable in the viewable in the monitor tab. We have log forwarding, our log forwarding profiles, we select for this particular rule, and then we can also have other settings. We can schedule it, so we can schedule it to be um, what time it starts, what time it ends, what so what uh, how often is this rule live? We can have it weekly or non-reoccurring, so we can put it in temporarily. So if we did a non-reoccurring rule, sometimes you get asked to put temporary rules in. Those temporary rules never never actually stay temporary they always end up being left unfortunately you can add a schedule to the rule and say okay well this rule is going to be for um, it's going to be for now and it's going to start uh, at let's see it's going to start at they say we're going to start at 12 o'clock we're going to start at 12 o'clock and then the end date so they've requested it for one day and then the end time will be 12 o'clock again, okay, temporal, it's not reoccurring, so that's going to go okay, and then we're going to have a schedule for that temporal, so this rule will only actually be available for that period of time, and then it will automatically stop, we have our cause marking as well, so we can set the uh, DSCP, we can set the precedence and follow client server flow, or none, and that's how we create our, our security policy rules, and remember, so a universal is going to be universally allowed so if you have multiple you have multiple um, zones in e either side it would be that zone to anyone that's on this side and, or that zone to anyone that's on that side whereas with an interzone rule it has to be uh, zone to zone it has to go across the firewall intrazone it's an either so user land to user land if you create an interzone rule if we change that to an interzone rule Intra zone rule there you'll see then destination is now greyed out because there is no destination zone to it and click OK and then we can see that's an intra zone rule and now we've got the source and that's going to be the same so it can only go user land to user land. Okay so that's the rule types.